oh, I've only got like one thing in my hand, it's fine, I don't need a basket. And they're like, take the basket. and welcome back to my podcast Esme's Country Life. Yes, we're filming another episode in the USA. This one I'm actually filming a whole week early because I know as soon as I come back from Florida I'm going to be flat out with doing things. So I'm currently recording this in Palm Beach. Um, in my last podcast episode, I only talked about two days in Florida. There was that much to talk about. So yes, today, again, we're going to be talking about my Florida adventures so far. But before we begin, I just want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of the podcast, Red Post. Red Post is an equestrian and country store based in the UK, but they also ship all over the world. And spring is here. Spring is around the corner, although it might feel like it. I've been getting loads of photos and videos of the horses um, from my mum from at home and they are filthy. They're disgusting. So be sure to get all of your lotions and potions, shampoos, mane and tail detanglers from Red Post because I'm sure if your horse is anything like mine, they need a good old spring clean, a good old a good old bath. That's what the horse is going to get when I get home. I'm also currently filming a spring cleaning series. So um, episode one is already out on my YouTube channel, but lots more to come with that. But anyway, yeah, thank you again to Red Post for sponsoring the podcast. Check them out at redpostquestrian.co.uk. Anyway, let's get into what I've, what's been happening over here in Florida. It's been quite the adventure so far to say the least so last where, where did where did we get up to i think the last thing i talked to you guys about was when i was in orlando i was talking about all the theme parks we had one kind of like half day in orlando so that day me and my dad we were destroyed we were exhausted that was one thing that we realized when we we're walking around the parks we we're walking around like wow there is a lot of very tired people here because I like two days took took it out of us. To be fair, right after that, we ended up getting a cold. So I don't know if that was from the plane, probably the plane. I don't know what it is, but every time I go on an airplane, I get ill. When you think about it, all that air and everything circulating, probably that. Anyway, so um, for our kind of third half day in Orlando, we're like, okay, let's take a chilled run. I say let's take a chilled run because I went to the gym that morning because we were having a little bit of a road trip that day. We were driving up to Akala and I was like, if I'm going to be sitting in a car for ages, I want to have a little moving groove. So went and used the gym there and um, that was all good. Actually, I did actually embarrass myself in the gym. Luckily, nobody saw it. If there were any security cameras or anything, they would have seen it. But um, I forgot that in the gym in America, you guys use miles per hour rather than kilometers per hour. Although when you think about it, in the UK, we use um, obviously like meters, centimeters, all that kind of stuff. And then for some reason, miles an hour in a car, we use that rather than kilometers, which doesn't really make much sense. But anyway, I think it's like a generational thing because we were talking about this the other day because um, a, r a rider was giving me a lesson and they were talking about stuff in feet. And I'm used to counting strides in meters and I was so confused. I was like having to do like maths in my brain and all that kind of stuff. Um, we had a little chat about that because obviously that's a little bit of a difference between the UK and the USA. And also, I just want to apologize to all the people that are not from the UK or USA. I know I kind of generalize a lot of my podcasts when I'm talking about things because I got one person in my comments and they were from Canada and they were like, why do you always leave us poor Canadians out? And I think it's because on my like YouTube demographics or my demographics on most of my socials about 45 percent of my audience is from the usa and obviously i have a big uk audience as well it's kind of like it kind of flips between the uk sometimes overtakes the usa sometimes overtakes but i'm sorry canadians you're like five percent and say with like australians as well you guys are a little, little bit smaller but i want to also new zealand and ireland um they're like my main guys and all the other guys in europe as well so just shout out to everyone from every country, okay? I don't want to upset anyone. Anyway, back to me being on this treadmill. So I thought I'm used to, you know, the numbers on the treadmill back at home in kilometers per hour. So I whacked it up to my normal number. But, and this also treadmill, because it was a new one I wasn't used to, it had a bit of a lag. So I was just like, oh yeah, let's whack it up. Let's go for a sprint. I almost fell off the end of this treadmill because it was in, um, miles an hour rather than kilometers per hour and I was like 
goodness gracious, I had to put both my legs on the other side, hold on for dear life and try and put it down. Luckily, nobody was in there because if they were, oh my gosh, it would have been so embarrassing. I literally almost like that meme of Taylor Swift falling off the treadmill. That was me. That was almost me. I was that close. Anyway, so there is that. Um, I did like a nice little workout. I'm not really like a big old gym girl, but I do I do enjoy moving and grooving my body if I'm just going to be sitting in the car all day. So also on our little car adventure road trip, we did stop off at a huge outlet mall, which I had so much fun at because so there are some brands in America that we don't really have in the UK. You can maybe order things online. But then again, I'm one of those people where I love to try things on. I feel like something, like I have quite broad shoulders. So sometimes I'm kind of in between sizes, um, that kind of thing. So I was like, okay, this is, this is my heaven. I had so much fun. And also when it's an outlet um, mall, everything is way cheaper. Everything's like discounted. It's all the stuff that's like end of season or things that haven't really sold. So for me, it's like posh thrifting. <laughs> that's how I like to describe it. So I was going around picked up some few little bits and pieces so I had had quite a bit of fun in there um couldn't get too much though because number one I need to be saving money for finishing off the cottage and also I need to be saving money saving space in my suitcase because hopefully I'm, I'm, I need to try and fit everything in <laughs> I mean I, I am a little bit of an overpacker I might have overpacked a little bit and then I've got a few extra things that I need to fit in there so that will be fun when it's time when it's time to go to go home. But yeah, so I went to the outlet mall. That was fun. One thing that I always forget about shopping in America is you'll just be like walking around your own, minding your own business. Now in the UK, that just happens. Like you, the only time you talk to a human really is maybe when you go into the changing rooms and they ask how many you have, like items you're trying on or if you're paying. That is it. But in the US, it's like a jump scare. I'll just be like looking through the racks, looking through the rails, and they'll just be this person and they pop up out of nowhere and they're like, hey ma'am, how can I help you today? Here's a basket. And they like hand you over this basket and you're just like, oh, I've only got like one thing in my hand. It's fine, I don't need a basket. And they're like, take the basket. So that's always quite good fun. Like, I don't know, it just it's just not what I'm used to. And like everyone's obviously very helpful. And that's the one thing that I always also forget about is kind of like, the tipping society and the um they always like introduce themselves and like say what their name is and obviously like whenever I go to the counter I always say like this person helped me so they can get the commission because working in retail is rough I've been lucky to never work in retail but I've had some friends that have worked in retail and I've heard some stories like working with the general public is not always fun I mean my job that I did before YouTube was working at a vet's practice cleaning up animal poo which some people would say is worse but I would say <laughs> I'd say the general public is worse than that animal poo I can do any day um, that was a weird quote please don't take that out of context <laughs> anyway moving on so I had a really good time shopping that kind of thing one thing that also that I've noticed because um, I actually had a meet and greet the other day and somebody asked me like what are your USA culture shocks and one thing that just feels so weird to me and other British people please tell me that it's not just me but the doors in the US feel like you're going through an emergency exit door every time you push them so the best way I'm going to try and describe this to you in audio terms or in Esme terms so if you could picture a door with like a big metal kind of bar going across and you push the bar to open the door in the UK we only really have those doors in like emergency exit doors. So maybe if you were in like some sort of hall or club or I don't know, I'm trying to think of somewhere like a mall, um, basically somewhere like in public where that door would never normally be used. Like that is like not a door you go through. It says like emergency exit only. You only push that door if there's like a fire or you need to get out for whatever reason. And then it starts the like fire alarm or like an alarm goes off. So every time I see those doors with the big metal bar, even though they don't say like emergency exit or anything like that on them, I just always feel really like when I press them I just feel like an alarm's gonna go off or something I find it a bit scary so that is one thing that uh takes a little while to get used to also like the public restrooms or toilets I also I need to start getting used to saying restrooms more because that's one thing that I, I feel like it sounds really rude I feel like oh yeah I'm just gonna go to the toilet or like I'm just gonna, it sounds like almost like dirty <laughs> almost just saying the toilet rather than the restroom so um yeah that's always quite funny where I'm like oh, I'm just going off to the loo just going going to the toilet going for a wee 
And Americans like the restroom. To be fair, like there are some people if they're a little bit more on the posh or the fancy side, they say if you're in polite company in the UK, you say I'm just going to go and powder my nose. So <laughs> there we go. Um, but yeah, that was quite interesting. Anyway, back to our road trip. So we had a little trip up to Akala and we went to the World Equestrian Centre, which I've done a whole YouTube vlog on. If you want to see what that is like, oh my goodness. It is huge. It is absolutely massive. They have, I'm going to try and get these stats right because I did have to remember them for the video, but it's been like a week since I filmed that now. They have, I'm pretty sure it's something like 23 outdoor arenas, six climate controlled indoor arenas. Now, when I tell you these indoor arenas are the biggest arenas I have ever seen in my life, they I don't know, I can't, I don't know how big they are, but they were absolutely huge. They were probably maybe like 12 times the size of, size of my local like indoor down the road. So that was wild and absolutely crazy. And also the other thing that was like a bit weird or strange for me when I was looking around, there was so many, I was there in my summer dress, you know, it was hot, it was sunny. I, I was perfectly, perfect temperature. And I'm a cold person. Like all of my friends know that I am the person where like, it will have to be super hot for me to wear like shorts or a skirt. Like I am a trouser girl or a leggings girl. I'm also like a hoodie girl as well. Like I, it takes, it takes me a lot to not have like long sleeves on, but oh my goodness, I was boiling. And there were all these people riding around wearing sweaters or jumpers or hoodies. And I was like, what is going on? Are you not sweaty? Are you not boiling especially if you're riding as well doing physical exercise maybe i'm just a really sweaty rider that might be a bit too much information but you know me i always get horrible helmet hair and i was just like what's going on and then i realized well some of them were just riding outside like that because you know in florida it gets a lot hotter in the summer and we're only in the winter at the moment and it was also because they were going in this indoor arena that was freezing. <laughs> so that was very different, not what I'm used to. We also had this little golf cart to go around the place because it was just that big. I kept saying, everyone was like, oh, what did you think to WEC or the World Equestrian Center? And I was like, I was just shocked because I've had, I've met friends and people that have been there before and they've told me how big it is, but you just go around every corner and you're like, oh my gosh, there's more. There's more where it just goes on and on. Um, and they also have barns labeled like A, B, C, D, and they've run out of letters. They've gone past Z or Z and it just goes on. So that was wild. They have like literally every, everything that you could need there. They have a gas station, they have a hotel, they have multiple restaurants. I love how the, the restaurants also, one is called Stirrups and one is called the Yellow Pony, which some people are like, oh yeah, they're kind of cute because it's horsey. And some people are like, no, hate it. It's weird, but I think it's quite fun. I quite like it. Um, and the Yellow Pony is kind of like an Irish pub as well, which to be fair, the food there was pretty good. I had the sushi there, that was good. Anyway, um, what what else? What else, did, what, what else did we do there? So I was actually there, I was um, very kindly invited. And also I was there with Le Meuf and they had like a table there. So I got to sit in the very fancy VIP area the Longines FEI League of Nations, which is kind of like, so it, it used to be called the Nations Cup or the Longines FEI Nations Cup for the fancy long term. Um, as like an FEI ambassador, I have to like <laughs> say the proper long version. Um, but yeah, anyway, that, so it's now called the Longines FEI League of Nations. So we got to see that unfortunately us Brits, we did not do that well. I, I went in full hopes, but unfortunately we didn't do well. But well done to Ireland. I feel like Ireland always do well. You guys, you, you're you just great, great horse people anyway. <laughs> so that was really good fun. They also had a drone show on afterwards, which I've never seen a drone show before. And to be fair, thinking about it, I would much prefer nowadays a drone show to fireworks because fireworks they're loud they're noisy obviously like with horses you don't want that any like animals or pets or even like some people as well that maybe have ptsd or um are afraid of loud noises like there's just a lot of things wrong with fireworks also they're kind of dangerous as well if things go wrong but a drone show on the other hand no noise they fly on by they can go into like different shapes and patterns so I feel like fireworks are out and drone shows are now in, although I don't actually know how much or how expensive it would be to put on a drone show because <laughs> thinking about it, 
Um, I know how much one of my drones costs for like camera equipment, filming, that kind of thing. But having a whole fleet, flock, what would you call a group of drones? Like a, I don't know, I was going to say a hive, but that's like what bees live in. A swarm, that's the word, a swarm of drones. <laughs> anyway, to have a whole, a whole fleet or a whole swarm, that is, that's going to be quite a lot, especially they're all like synced up as well. I think there was one, one that was, you know, I was like, that guy, he's the main character. He's doing his own show on his own. He wasn't <laughs> with the rest of the drones. So that was quite funny, but it was really cool. Like they put all the nation's flags up as well. They had the WEC logo. They had like a little horse as well, jumping, all made out of drones. So that was pretty cool. That was quite fun. And then right at the end, it started tipping it down with rain classic florida although that's the only time it's rained for me so far here there's been like a bit of spitting a little bit of rain like here and there on some days but that was the only time it's properly rained so all of my, i was like yes i'm going to florida i'm going to be in the heat and the sunshine and my friends were like you do know florida it does rain quite a bit so I have escaped the rain. I was talking to my friend who's back at home and I was like, um, how's the weather been while I've been away? And she was like, not good, still raining loads. And I was like, oh no. Cause I was, you know, I think I might've been a little bit optimistic. Cause I thought, oh, I'll be coming home to spring in England. All the fields will be dry. And yeah, apparently that is not the case. It is still horrendously muddy. So yeah, lovely, lovely. Um, anyway, back to WEC. What else did I do there? So I filmed a little bit of a tour, filmed lots of fun things, a lot of networking, business meeting. But obviously the most important thing that you guys want to know about is I did some riding out there. So I tried equitation and I tried hunters for the first time. Now, if you don't know what those are, do not worry. I'm going to give a very bad Esme description, Esme version of what they are as someone who is British and is looking at it from an outsider's point of, point of view. Um, I actually did a whole YouTube video on this as well if you'd like to see me trot, like riding and that kind of thing. And I feel like all of my American viewers that do equitation or hunters are gonna watch it and cringe and be like, oh my gosh, this girl does not know what she's doing because I definitely don't. It was, it was difficult, it was hard. Um, but I learned that day that Hunters, oh, oh no, I'll do equitation first because that was the order I did it. Equitation is basically showing, but it's all down to the rider's position, to the equitation, obviously, <laughs> and like how pretty they look, but also like the better your position is, obviously the more effective you are going to be as a rider. Um, so it's all down to that. And then Hunters is all more about the horse. So how well the horse is moving, how well the horse is going, how pretty the horse looks over the jumps. Now, one thing that I did get told off a lot for in both Hunters and Equitation was riding like a show jumper because I cut the corners off. I was going too fast. I, yeah. So that, <laughs> that was a lot for me to take and a lot for me to learn. I thought, because I've done quite a lot of different equestrian disciplines in my Challenge Esme series. I've done polo, I've done horseback archery, I've done jousting, I've done side saddle, I've done mounted games. And I thought, equitation and hunters, how hard can it be? You know, I've jousting and polo cross, they're pretty different to what I'm used to doing at home with the horses. But equitation, surely that's just slow show jumping and looking pretty. Oh my goodness. It is difficult because number one, I had so many bad show jumpering kind of habits. Show jumpering is definitely not quite a word. Show jumpery. I'm, I'm making it up. We're, go we're rolling with it. I'm adding it to the Esme Oxford Dictionary. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, that was, it was a little, it was a little tricky. Also, one thing I found out is that in both classes, the horses take off so early and it feels really wrong as a show, for coming from a show jumper, eventing background because normally if you go for quite a long stride it's you feel more balanced having like a very upward position if you know you know but if you go for like a shorter stride then obviously maybe not so much but anyway you're doing this long stride and you have to kind of be like halfway up the horse's neck well that's what it feels like anyway and I'm used to Joey, who is a horse where he can get quite flat and he can get quite on his forehand after a jump. So a lot of the time after he lands, my instructor is always like, shoulders back, sit up, um, 
like kind of almost pull him up because he just like is he's almost like go riding around on his nose um, and then in the hunters it was like nope hold on to that mane you better just like lean on their neck and don't come back up like that was the one thing I, i'm very good at like popping back up after a jump they're like no, no no you better stay down and it was so weird it's one of those things where i feel if i just had a week of constant lessons doing that i feel like i could get it but in like a half an hour hour session it was a lot for me to take in it was a lot for my brain to work and also i was riding a completely different horse as well like both horses are very different to what mine at home and i was trying to like get used to that horse as well but yeah the thing that felt weirdest to me was going for a long stride but doing it slowly because normally if you have a little bit less impulsion or you're going a little bit slower you just add a stride you shorten up a little bit or you take you know you take off a little bit later but no you had to take off so early and go so slow and I hated it. It felt so weird. It just felt so wrong. But I'm sure I could get used to it if I just had a few more lessons and really stuck at it. So there we go. But you, some of you guys left me very lovely comments on that YouTube video. It hasn't been up for long on the day that I'm recording this. So thank you. Because after those lessons, I thought, goodness grief, these two instructors that have taught me are going to think this girl cannot ride. I was even tempted to be like, look, here's a video of me show jumping my horse. I promise I can ride. Like, this is just what I'm used to riding. Like a very like Joey has actually been very speedy recently which I am actually very much enjoying he's been very good um I've I've also been sent lots of videos and photos of Joey while I've been away because we're gone for quite a long time we've gone we're being we're away for two weeks exactly so um last time I went for a longer trip um, Joey went to my friend's yard and when he went the first night I woke up in the morning got a photo th through from her and apparently Joey had done a dirty protest and pooed in his water bucket so luckily there has been no poo in his water bucket so far or what I'm aware of anyway and apparently he's been going really nicely so he is having a fun time in boot camp at the moment um, but I have been ma made sure that he is still getting lots of cuddles, kisses and attention and my brother and my mum have gone and visited him a few times as well while I'm away which is nice so anyway that has that has been that that has been that's a little joey update for you all um back to what i was saying what was i doing oh yes yeah, so we did like a whole tour and everything the world equestrian center they also have loads of shops there as well they have a lemure shop so if you're over there go and check that out they also are currently building a whole equestrian shopping mall so if you're gonna think like basically a massive shopping mall but every shop is a horsey shop how cool is that? That is incredible. So I know that Lumia and Fairfax and Favour are going to have some shops in there coming soon. Um, I'm not sure when it's going to be built by, but apparently the hotel was built like three months early, which when, when you think about construction, normally things take a lot longer than you realise or than you think. So that's quite exciting. Also, one thing that I did find <laughs> weird, um, kind of, I was going to say wildlife-wise, I don't really know if it's really wildlife, but in England, normally when it's a little bit sunny and warm, like it is in Florida, you get like horse flies, all these different flies that come out and bite you. There's fly spray and everything. But when I was out there, they just had these like really small little bugs. And maybe it was just where we were sitting that day or maybe it was just that day that there were a lot. But I just kept finding them in my water, like in my water glass and everything. So um, if someone in from Florida could tell me what those bugs are called, I would love to know because I just kept fe feeling like they were like crawling all over me when I was watching the League of Nations. So that was quite funny. Um, but yeah, luckily, nothing really too embarrassing happened when I was at WEC. Um, we got we had a few people because we were obviously out there filming with cameras and stuff. They were like, um, "Are you allowed to be doing this? Do you have meter passes?" And we we're like, "Yep." And they were like, "Okie dokie." And also, um, one thing that I need to get used to is there being stop signs because we ain't we have like very few stop signs in the UK. We have like give way signs, which mean obviously like somebody else kind of you know there it's their right of way. But we don't really ha we have like maybe like one or two stop signs in my local area that I can think of on the top of my head but um, I remember <laughs> this is probably not a story I should tell in public but I remember when I went to Florida when I was 
on holiday with my family. I, can't, I think I was like 11 or 12. My mum was driving for the first time out there and she didn't realise that you had to stop at stop signs. She thought it was like a giveaway sign where like, you know, if it's clear, if you're like rolling a little bit, you can just roll on by. But we were like, no, 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 stop. And she was like, what do you mean stop? Was I about to hit something or something? We're like, no, it was a stop sign. <laughs> so that's quite funny. Um, Anyway, yeah, so I had a lovely time at WEC. Then I actually did some filming out there for the TV show Riding with the Reddens, which is on Horse and Country TV. Their first season is out, and we were filming for season two, which should hopefully be out soon. But if you haven't heard of the show, I'll do a little brief description for you guys. So um, Riding with the Reddens is about a family called the Reddens, which is made up of... Um, group of cousins so there's Abby, Emma and Anne-Marie and um, their mum Summer as well is in it quite a lot and um, their parents and things and it's all it's a re really lovely like wholesome show about this American family who their daughters have a dream of getting to the Olympics and it's all about following their like eventing journey with their horses like competing all the time traveling across Florida and the country and that kind of thing so um, if you want to go and check it out be sure to go and do so but after this episode, because you you got to stay. you got to stay listening. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, I had so much fun doing that. All the girls are so lovely as well. We got along so well, and hopefully they're going to come over to the UK at some stage. So I might have to take them along to one of the big eventing shows that we have in the UK, because um, obviously over we have Kentucky, which I'm going to this year. I've never been before, which I'm so excited. So hopefully see some of you guys there. If you ever want to find out more information about my meet and greets, then be sure to head to thisesme.com. Sorry about that. I hate being that YouTuber that always promotes their things, but just got to do it sometimes. <laughs> anyway, so um, I did some riding with them. I rode this horse called Lemon, who was so cute. He was only five, though. So he was a little bit of a baby, a little bit green at times. He was also super speedy. So um, he was definitely a horse where you had to kind of like hold his hand a little bit. You had to have quite a bit of contact. So that took a little while for me to get used to. We did a bit of a competition as well. They had a four star five no yeah four star or five star and two olympic event riders there that watched us ride and gave us feedback so the pressure was on as well because i was riding a horse i didn't know that was only five in front of all these like amazing riders and in front of a tv crew as well so it was a lot but i felt like i didn't embarrass myself too much so that is all good um and yeah lemon was such a cute he was probably my favorite horse out of all the horses that i rode he was the one that i clicked with the most him or buster were probably my my favorites um but yeah had a lot of fun so yeah i just want to say a huge thank you to everyone that has let me ride their horses or let me film with them and you guys over in the states have been so accommodating and so lovely as well because we kind of went into this trip and we planned a few rest days a few like editing days and in all fairness we have not had much time to do that we have just been like um, there have been so many people who have been like, oh my gosh, come to my barn, I'll give you a barn tour, we'll film a video together, we'll do this, that and the other. So I've been super busy, I've just been like flat out, non-stop, so, and have had so much fun as well. But yeah, filming um, with Riding with the Reddens was definitely a highlight as well. And yeah, the girls are just so lovely, we got along so well and had really, it was some really like, we did a few technical exercises that I really want to try with my boys when I get home as well, because they were very, very fun. Then after our time in Akala, it was time to travel down to Wellington. So that day was pretty much just a long old road trip. Um, to be fair, we had a very productive day that day because that morning was the day that I filmed the podcast episode. We filmed the rest of the like WEC tour as well. And then we traveled down. So that was a busy, a busy, busy day. And um, it, I can't lie, everyone has <laughs> said this to us, but they were like, yeah, the journey from Akala to Wellington, it's a little bit boring. There's not much going on like on the road. It's not like, oh, go and stop at this landmark or go and stop at like this really cool, fun thing that you can do. It was just a road of kind of, uh, not jungle, is it? Is, is it bush? Do you call it bush here? Do you call it jungle? Do you call it swamp? I've just you know, Florida, Florida nature. <laughs> it was a, it, so it was just lots of trees and lots of fields and lots of wetness and lots of, it was quite fun going past like towns and everything, especially as there was like a little sign that would be like, welcome to, and then the town. Um, went past a few colleges, 
Um, that there really wasn't much. But what was quite fun though, like me and my dad were saying, because we don't really have many billboards in the UK. You might have like the odd one on the odd motorway, like one or two, maybe a few in like cities, but billboards aren't really a thing in the UK. Maybe it's due to like planning permission because they are quite big and we're a very small country and in the States, you guys have a lot of room. Um, but it was actually quite fun because when we were driving down, it was like, spot the billboard. And we were like, what's gonna be on the next billboard? Oh, it's for some window random shop that we've never heard of, woo! <laughs> it was like, but it was quite cute though because they'd just be like little in independent businesses. There were a lot for lawyers. And there was one for a hospital as well, which was a bit of a culture shock because I don't think, I, I've never seen an advertisement for a hospital before in the UK. Like they're, they're the opposite, like they're the, like our hospitals, they're, I mean, they're struggling, but again, we have the NHS, which we are very, very lucky for. Um, and I know that some people won't say it's free, but I'm sure that you guys in the States pay your taxes as well. So, um, but no, we are very lucky to have the NHS. So big love and shout out to all the key workers and NHS workers out there. You guys keep doing what you're doing. You're doing amazing work. And I know how hard it is because some of my friends and family members work for the NHS. And I have heard stories. I, I know, well, I don't know because I've never done it, but I've heard how difficult it is. So big love to you. Um, anyway, so that was weird seeing. There were some like strange billboards that we saw along the way as well. So that was quite good fun. It was, yeah, played a game and spot the billboard. We'd try and guess what the next billboard would be. And that that's what we that's what we did to keep it keep inter keep things interesting because it was quite a long drive down. Also, what was really weird, we stopped at a few like gas stations or service stations, and we went to two different ones, but they seemed exactly the same, which was wild. So it was like going into a par parallel universe. To be fair, we do kind of have that in the UK. I I don't know if you know this. I think I've said it a few times before on the podcast, but. I rank service stations. That's how sad my job has got. <laughs> because I do a lot of traveling up and down the country, we go to a lot of service stations. So I have them all ranked. And there are some, if especially if they're like both welcome break or look at me, I know my service station <laughs> brands. <laughs> but especially if like, you know, they're the same service station brand. Sometimes it is a bit weird. It's like that shop should be there or that food stand should be there like it's the same but different um, but anyway one thing that was a bit of a cult shock that I've never seen before in the UK is I saw for the first time a cake vending machine that was wild never seen one of those before it does make me think though because normally when you think of cake you think of like a f bakery that's you know made it fresh and it's been there for like m no longer than a day and then when you think of a cake vending machine, it just makes me think, how long does this cake last? Does the cake get interchanged? What are the preservatives in it? I don't know. To be fair, there were some which were like bright neon like colors. And I was like, I don't know if that would be allowed in the UK. But anyway, so that was quite interesting and fun to see. I did not know cake vending machines were a thing. And if you didn't know what cake vendings, vending machines were either, you're welcome. So <laughs> there we go. Um, I think I'm going to finish the adventure for of this podcast there because we now are entering the Palm Beach era. I feel like era. I feel like that doesn't really work. My time in Palm Beach, which will be the next episode, because I feel like I've done. I've done each time I stay somewhere different. Feels like a whole di whole new trip. I feel like I've done so much in the last like week and a bit than I have in the whole year. Like me and my dad were talking about this the other day when we're having dinner. It it honestly feels like last year that we were in Orlando going to all the parks. That feels like so long ago. Um, but anyway, thank you again for listening to the podcast. Thank you so much again to Red, po Red Post for sponsoring the podcast. Be sure to go and check them out. Stock up on your shampoo. I know your horse needs a bath because mine do and they're disgusting. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for listening and I'll see you all next time. Bye.